Good day and welcome to St. Barnabas. Welcome to St. Barnabas as we gather together to hear God's Word, to sing praise His song to His name and to allow, through the Holy Spirit, the Word of God to come into our hearts and to give us guidance and leadership so that we can follow the paths of the disciples as they follow Jesus. So that, yes, we too can say, yet if you say so. That is our text today from Luke. Master, we have worked all night, all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. And so today we'll discover what does it mean to hear the Word of God and to do the Word of God, knowing that He is right for us and for those concerned about us. So again, thank you for being with us today. Keep in mind that our annual vestry is on Sunday, February the 27th at 11 o'clock following the service. And we are expecting to begin our in-person services next Sunday, Sunday, February the 13th at 10 o'clock. So please let us know if you're coming to that and it will be good to see people in person again. Again, thank you for being with us and join us as we sing our opening hymn number 559, Blessed Jesus at Your Word. Amen. 
A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, <coughs> Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull and stop their ears and shut their eyes so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant and houses without people and the land is utterly desolate until the Lord sends everyone far away, and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remains in it, it will be burned again, like a terebrith or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The whole seed is its stump. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Their appointed psalm for today is Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. For they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now, I should remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters, at one time most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to someone untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles. 
unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though so it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you sh shall have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gradual gospel hymn for today is hymn number 527, How Firm a Foundation. Beginning to break. 
So they signaled to their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he had, and all who were with him, were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. And when they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him, the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, we again give thanks that we can hear your words and allow your words to come into our hearts, that we can take tune of what it is that you're saying to us and to believe it and to act like the disciples did to do as they were told, knowing that what you tell us is indeed the truth. Bless our words today, that they are indeed your words of truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yet, if you say so. A wonderful statement. A wonderful statement of this fisherman, this owner of his own business, working with his friends and his partners. He's had a, a busy day, a busy night, actually, and he's cleaning his nets, he's getting ready for the next catch the next day. In other words, he's ready to go home. And Jesus says, put your nets back into the water. But not just in any water. To go out into the deep and to let your nets down into the deep water. And he says, yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. And how often are we told to do things? And yet we have this disbelief but somehow the one telling us has more belief than we do. And we rely on that truth that's within that person, that if they say so, yet if you say so, Lord, then I will let down my nets. I will go and build a church. I will go and do this or I will do that, yet because you have said so. There are many times as a child growing up on Upper Oak here in St. Lambert, and my father would say, to go and do this or to do that. And often it was even my mother who would say, go and get that paper route or work in the gas station, work on the milk truck and go and work for McLean Brothers and make sure you do a good job. And I would wonder sometimes if I was even capable of doing any of this. And I would say, well, if you say so, you know better than I. And she did. And so the disciples who were becoming disciples realized that this individual, this person that had come amongst them in the middle of their work day, said to them, realizing how despondent they felt that they had caught nothing, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. And of course, everything that Jesus says is very often the thing that you actually do, but there's a greater, deeper meaning a metaphorical meaning to the words. And indeed, the word deep water. True, he could catch wonderful, huge fish in the deep waters. But the plural of the deep things, that is to say the secret unrevealed purpose of anyone. Imagine that we would let down our nets, the knowledge and experience that we've gained through going through our baptisms and our uh, confirmations and all of our study, even the week-to-week -week study that we do, that we would then take that and take the net of that and put it into the deep waters to truly come to understand the secrets, the unrevealed purpose of ourselves and of others. And that's what Jesus is saying, that if they were to leave him, their, their work, and follow him and do as he says, to let down their nets, in other words, to let down who they are and what they are, to take their whole business attitude and put down their nets in the deep waters of following Jesus Christ. They will see and understand great things. Do not be afraid, Jesus said to them. From now on, you will be catching people. And it's interesting if we look at the word catch. It means to catch alive. In other words, to give life, not death but by the teaching that they shall win souls for the kingdom of God, and to win souls for the kingdom of God gives eternal life. In other words, we catch people.
people into this good news, allowing them to see and understand not death, but life in the kingdom of God, which is eternal life. Are you ready to cast your nets down into the deep waters of the things of Jesus Christ, those mysterious things, so that you can catch people by allowing them to hear the gospel, allowing them to come into this new kingdom of God, which is eternal life rather than death? Not only when the time when they die, and they, we, we go on to this eternal life, but even in their own present stance right now, the difficulties of life, the happiness of life, that they could realize that they are indeed in the hands of God. And when they had brought their boats to shore, they had gone out and they had fished and they had filled up their two boats, and they come over, and then they left everything. Simon Peter, the sons of Zebedee, they leave their business and they follow Jesus. They have taken all they've learned in the business of catching fish and they're transposing that over to the catching of people to deliver the gospel one to the other. In Matthew 19, 29, we did not read this today, but it coincides with this text. It says, And everyone who has left houses, or brothers, or sisters, or fathers, or mothers, or children, or farms on account of my name, will receive many times as much, and will inherit eternal life. So the disciples have realized this, but they've also realized something else, especially Simon Peter. Simon Peter he realizes that Jesus Christ has come among him. Jesus Christ has told him what to do, and Jesus Christ has led him to the greatest catch he's ever had. And he realizes the importance of Jesus Christ and the sanctity of Jesus Christ. And he says to Jesus, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. And how many of us at certain times in our life have realized that we are apart from God, and instead of saying, accept me, Lord, as I am, and forgive me, we say, go away from me, Lord. And we push ourselves away. But Jesus says, no, come closer. Even though you think you are a sinful man, come closer to me and hear the story of righteousness, of forgiveness, of atonement for eternal life. And then take that message that you have learned on yourself and take it to other people. There's a few things happening in this story. There's very much here. But this part of feeling like they're a sinful man, we hear this also in the reading from Isaiah. Isaiah says, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. But what does it mean to have unclean lips? There were times, not very often, that I'd come home and I'd say a few words, and my mother said, you go wash out your mouth with soap, because some of the words coming out weren't too clean. But the meaning of unclean lips here is that the people, the individuals, are so far away from God that they do not have the Word of God in their hearts, and so therefore their lips are not sanctified into the words of God, but, or, but allow the words of this world to overtake them their words, their mind, their whole being. And so Isaiah believes that he is a man of unclean lips and Jesus and, and God is saying to him, let me clean you, let me prepare your lips and prepare your mouths and, so that your sin will be blotted out. Because the seraph, the angel, takes the coal from the altar and he touches his lips and he says, there your guilt has departed, your sin is blotted out. And then he realizes this and he says, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And Isaiah says, Here, send me. And so just as Isaiah had the coals from the altar, when we take the bread and the wine, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, we allow it to touch our lips. Is it not like the coals of the altar in Isaiah's time, that it cleanses us and prepares us to go forth, that we no longer have unclean lips because we've allowed the word of God to come into our hearts? Even Paul, when he's speaking to the Corinthians, he's come into a realization that as bad as he was, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. He was the one that would go and take Christians and kill them and murder them. 
But he realized that through the grace of God, he was able then to take the message of God to those who were in such need of it. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Can each and every one of us today say that by the grace of God, I am what I am, that I am no longer a man or a woman of unclean lips, that I am no longer a sinful man, as Peter would say, but that we are now faithful people, pardoned with peace that we have been cleansed from our sins and now able to serve God in a quiet mind. Those are not my words. Those are words from our collect today. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Serving one another, serving our brothers and sisters with the good news that we are called to proclaim. But who are we called to proclaim it to? We go back to what we were reading in Luke. Jesus speaks to them and he tells them what to do to let down their nets in those mysterious waters and there they will catch what they have never caught before. To put our mindset, our whole life into the deep waters of the mysteries, mysteries of the Holy Spirit that we will catch people. But when their boat gets overfilling with fish, they call on their partners. They call on the other boats in the vicinity. They call on the people in the area and they work collectively together. And they fill their boats until they're ready to sink. And I believe that that's what we have been called here in St. Barnabas. To reach out to one another, that's true. To realize that we are now through grace, that we have been forgiven and that we are now pardoned with peace. And by the grace of God, we are who we are to reach out to our families and our friends, but also to our partners, partners within this community, partners who are beginning to fill this church to do the work of God by caring one for the other. Because I believe that as we work with our partners, as they begin to see these deep mysteries, the mysteries of letting down our nets into the deep waters, that our congregation will grow on a Sunday morning because the people who use this building through the week will come to worship God because they are beginning to see the miracles already. Jesus Christ introduced himself to his disciples by saying, let down your nets into the deep waters. But when he died, they began to wonder and they even went back to their old jobs as fishermen. But then Jesus came back and he met them again. And you would need to read John 21 verses 1 to 14 and I encourage you to read that. Because there are times in our life where we lose sight of the Master. And we go back to our old ways. And what Jesus Christ does in John 21 is he meets them again at their place. He sees them fishing all night, catching nothing. And he says, put your nets on the right side of the boat, which is where the person who steered the boat would be, and Jesus was in control of the boat at this time. And they put down their nets, and they catch 153 fish, to the point that their boats are overflowing, but their nets this time are not breaking. So I invite you to you who are here and feel atoned and sanctified to take the word of God to take the word of God to your friends and your families and to our partners. But for those of you who are perhaps are listening in for the first time, as though this is Jesus returning back to see you again a second time, listen to the word of God and then say and respond, yet if you say so, I will let down my nets. Amen. And our anthem of reflection for today, is stand up and bless the Lord.
together let us confess our faith as we recite the Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let's bow our hearts in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks. And indeed, there is no commandment greater than these, that we should love you and love our neighbors as yourself. Instill within our hearts, Lord, the love of our neighbors, the love of our partners, the love of our friends and family, enough to bring the gospel to them, to catch them, and to give them eternal life through your grace and forgiveness and pardon and peace that you have given us. Indeed, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for this church and for its ability to welcome so many people. We give thanks for our new vergers who have been preparing this space for our new partners. We ask that you continue to give them strength and diligence in all that they do and that you keep your hand upon all of our partners that they will come to see that the work that they do is indeed the work of God as you embrace them and build them up to give them strength to indeed cast their nets into the deep waters. Lord in your mercy hear our prayer. We continue to give thanks for our Bishop Mary, for Robert and for all those of the diocese who work to bring all of our churches together in unity and solidarity. Continue to give them peace and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. prayer. Continue to pray for our city and our provincial governments and our federal governments, and that, the, that you, Lord, would embrace them with the guidance and wisdom and knowledge of the Holy Spirit, that you would atone their mouth, their lips, to make them clean, that they would speak with clean lips. In other words, speak with the knowledge of your knowledge, O oh Lord, through the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And now, Lord, we pray for those who are sick, alone, worried, anxious, those who are at home, those who are in hospital. Give us strength, Lord, to reach out into the deep, to embrace them with your word, to bring eternal life, the new kingdom of God, to these people, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are dying, those who are dying, and those who are grieving still, those who have died. Embrace them with your mercy. Indeed, Lord, we pray today, oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commit all that we say and all that we do to you, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes everyone with an invitation to his table. Let us confess our unrighteousness, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have moved away from you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repentant. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your irreverence. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures high and low. Give thanks to God in love made known, Creator, Word, and Spirit, One. God of compassion and forgiveness, receive our offering this day. 
and make us one with him who is our peace, Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Sois béni, Dieu de bonté, Créateur du ciel et de la terre. Tu es invité, tes fidèles, à se purifier le cœur et à préparer la porte de la joie pour que, renouvelée par les œufs du baptême et restaurée par le mystère eucharistique, nous soyons plus fervents à la prière et plus généreux dans nos œuvres. Nous élevons donc nos voix vers toi pour proclamer la gloire de ton nom. Therefore, we raise our voices to you in praise to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you've brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, and out of death into life. On the night that Jesus was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray your gracious God to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit, and in the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now rejoicing in the presence of God, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life. And that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light, light in, in the, the midst of us, bring us to light, light and life. life. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Body of Christ, the bread of life. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of life. Amen. The body of Christ, the gift of salvation.
Eternal God, in you we find peace beyond all telling. May we who share in this heavenly banquet be instruments of your peace on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose, whose power working in us can do infinitely, infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in, in the, the church and in Christ Jesus, Jesus forever and ever. Amen. May the Spirit of the Lord be upon you, rejoicing together as those appointed to bring the good news of love to the poor, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And our closing hymn for today is Bright the Vision That Delighted. Quiet reflection. Oh, love, how deep, how broad, how high. 